Ever wonder how much of your daily life involves plastics? Plastics are so ingrained in our lives that we often forget their existence. Like invisible threads, they weave through our daily routines, silently facilitating our modern conveniences. Consider this. When you wake up, you probably reach for an alarm clock or smartphone, both encased in plastic. You might grab a quick breakfast with food items typically wrapped in plastic packaging. On your commute to work, you're likely traveling in a vehicle with numerous plastic components, or maybe you're using public transportation where plastic is a staple material. At work, your computer, your desk chair, even the pen you're holding, all contain plastic. In the evening you might relax with a book, the cover of which is likely coated in a thin layer of plastic for durability. Plastics, in countless forms, are integral to our lives. But have you ever stopped to ponder over how these versatile materials come into existence? The story of plastic begins with raw materials. Now you might wonder, what exactly are these materials? Well, let's delve into that. The primary raw materials for plastic production are refined oil and natural gas. Yes, you heard right. The same oil used to fuel our cars and the gas we use for cooking and heating our homes. These hydrocarbon-rich substances are the unsung heroes behind the versatile material we know as plastic. So, how do we get from oil and gas to plastic? It's all about chemistry. These raw materials are processed in refineries and transformed into what we call monomers. Monomers are simple molecules that possess the incredible ability to bind together to form larger structures. Picture a line of children holding hands in a playground, each child representing a monomer. When they join hands, they form a long chain, much like the polymer chains in plastics. Now, there are different types of monomers, each giving birth to a different type of plastic. This variety in monomers is what gives us the vast array of plastics we see today, from the plastic wrapping your sandwich to the dashboard of your car. This transformation from raw materials to monomers is a complex yet fascinating process that is the foundation of the plastic industry. And it's these monomers, these children holding hands, that make up the essence of every plastic item we use. These monomers are the building blocks in the creation of plastics. If you're enjoying this journey as much as we are, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. This journey from raw materials to the plastic we use daily is a fascinating one and we're sure your friends and family would love to join us. Share this video with them and let them in on the secrets of plastic production. And remember, there's a wealth of knowledge to be discovered on our channel, so do visit us regularly for more insightful videos. Now let's continue our journey and dive deeper into the world of plastics. Now, imagine these monomers as a chain, linking together to form a polymer. That's right, a polymer. This is where the magic happens, and the heart of plastic production begins to beat. Let's dive into the process of polymerization. This is a chemical process that involves heat, pressure, and sometimes even catalysts to bind these monomers into long chains, creating polymers. Each monomer is like a single bead, and polymerization is like stringing these beads together. But instead of a necklace, we get a chain of molecules that we call a polymer. Imagine a room full of people holding hands, creating a long, interconnected chain. This is what polymerization is like at a molecular level. But instead of hands, we have monomers. And instead of people, we have heat and pressure and sometimes catalysts, joining these monomers together. Now, polymerization doesn't happen in a snap. It's a process that requires precise conditions. Heat is crucial as it provides the energy needed for the monomers to react with each other. Just like how we need a little push to step out of our comfort zone, these monomers need a bit of heat to get them going. Pressure, on the other hand, pushes the monomers closer together, increasing the likelihood of them reacting with each other. It's like when you're at a party and your friend pushes you towards your crush. The closer you are, the higher the chance of interaction, right? Catalysts are the real game changers here. They speed up the reaction without getting used up in the process. Think of them as the perfect wingman who helps you score a date but stays out of the limelight. Once the polymerization process is complete, we're left with a material that is both lightweight and durable. This material is the raw form of plastic that we're all familiar with. It's ready to be shaped, molded and transformed into the myriad of products we see and use every day. And voila! We have the raw form of plastic ready for shaping and molding. From here, the raw plastic is set to take on the world in any shape or form. Imagine a shapeless, formless blob of potential ready to be molded into anything we can dream up. 
This is the point where our raw plastic truly comes alive. Let's dive into the fascinating world of plastic shaping. Our first stop is molding, a process as old as craftsmanship itself, but made new and exciting with the versatility of plastic. Through methods like injection molding, blow molding and rotational molding, we can create anything from tiny bottle caps to large water tanks. It's like magic, turning a molten plastic blob into a functional object in mere seconds. Next, we have extrusion, a process you might liken to squeezing toothpaste out of a tube. The plastic is heated, then forced through a die, a shaped hole, to create long, continuous shapes. Think of your everyday plastic pipes, window frames, even your favorite bag of chips, all owe their existence to extrusion. But that's not all. There are other methods like thermoforming, where sheets of plastic are heated and then shaped over a mold. And let's not forget about casting, where liquid plastic is poured into a mold and left to cool and harden. These processes and many others give plastics their final form, turning a raw material into something real, something tangible that we use every day. And that's how the plastic in your everyday items take shape. So that's the journey of plastic from raw materials to your everyday items. We've traced the life of plastic from its humble beginnings as raw materials, namely petroleum and natural gas, and followed its transformation through a process called polymerization, a fascinating journey from crude to useful. We've seen the intricate steps involved in the making of plastic, from the extraction of the raw materials to the molding of the final product. It's a process that combines science, technology and ingenuity to create a material that is integral to our lives. Plastics are everywhere, from the smartphone in your hand, the food packaging in your kitchen, to the car you drive. Its versatility, durability and cost-effectiveness have made it a staple in our modern world. But let's not forget the journey it took to become so ubiquitous. Next time you use a plastic item, remember the journey it took to reach your hands. We've reached the end of our plastic journey, but there's so much more to explore. Thank you for accompanying us on this incredible journey. From raw material to the final product, it's been a fascinating adventure, hasn't it? If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel for more insightful content like this. We regularly post videos delving into the world of everyday items, so make sure to visit our channel often. Remember, Every plastic item has a story, and there are countless more stories waiting to be told. Together, let's continue to explore the world around us, one object at a time.